So I wanna show you a really cool trick that you can use inside a Bricks Builder to show and hide your sidebar based on specific conditions. So an example of this might be on some blog posts you wanna have a layout with a left-hand sidebar, and then on other blog posts, maybe you just wanna have the blog post content take up the full width of the page and have no sidebar. So this video is gonna show you an easy way to go out and do that. And the best part about the way that I'm about to show you is that you can go and set this up inside a Bricks Builder so that you only have to create one blog post template like this with the sidebar and then based on some conditions this sidebar over here will either output on the page or it won't output on the page and then if this is hidden i.e not output then we're going to make the content area automatically stretch the full width of the page it's very straightforward easy to manage and uh, yeah it's just a really cool thing to know how to do so i think the best way to go out and do this in today's video is to start from scratch so recreating this template it's not going to take us long we won't do everything uh, but we will just get the two columns going. So up here, I'm gonna to go to settings and go to template settings and conditions, and I'm just gonna disable this. So I'm gonna remove these conditions here. So now this isn't applying to anywhere on my website. So if I save that and I go back to my blog post here and I reload, you can see that the template's all messed up and it's just using the default bricks theme template for the blog posts. So let's go back into our admin area. So I'll click up to here and then I'll go to bricks and templates and then let's go add new and I'll call this single blog post with sidebar and demo just because it's a demo for today's video and in our example today I'm going to select single as the template type you can do what I'm about to show you on anything here you could do archive pages and so on it's the exact same process but here we're going to do it for our single blog post on our website so I'll go single and I'll go down and click publish next we'll go to edit with bricks and now that we're in here let's create our layout with our sidebar so if we go and click section and then for this section I'm just going to give it a background color because that's just how my website is set up so I'll just go uh, white there and then inside this container I'll go up here and I'm going to add a block element and that's going to be for our primary content and I'll add one more and that's going to be for our sidebar so I'm just going to rename these so I'll call this primary and then the second one's going to be sidebar and while we're here I'm also going to change their ID so on primary I'm going to go up here and I'm going to edit this and I'm going to say primary and press enter so now this has the ID of primary and I'll go down here to the sidebar and I'll do the same I'll click edit and I'll type sidebar and enter. Now let's quickly go ahead and just add some content in here. So in the primary block, I'll go up to here and add an element and we're looking for post content. So I'll add that element and then I'll click over to here and then under the content tab, the data source, I'm just gonna leave that as the WordPress. So it uses the Gutenberg content that I'm writing my blog post in. And what we might do, so we have some demo data here is I'm gonna go to settings and then I'm gonna go down to template settings and then populate content and I'll go content type and we'll go to single post or page and I'll just select redirect WooCommerce to a custom thank you page after checkout and I'll go apply preview and now this is gonna reload the page. And now we have some actual data to work with inside of Bricks Builder. So there we are. So the next thing that we wanna do is sit our primary content and sidebar next to each other. So to do that using Flexbox, we go up to the parent, which is the container. And then here for the flex direction, we go over and set it to row. So now they're sat next to each other. And Flexbox by default, will try and sit them next to each other with equal width. So they're 50% each now. And then for the sidebar, just to make this demonstration a lot easier to follow along, I'm gonna give this a background color. So I'll go to style and then we'll go down to background. And I'm just gonna make it this bright green color here so we can see what we're doing. And then in the sidebar, let's add some content. So I'm gonna go up to here and I'm just gonna add some images. So I'll just go image there. And then inside of here, I'll click select image. And just for this demo, I'm just gonna select one of my most recent YouTube videos, the thumbnail. And let's go ahead and we'll just duplicate that. And then for this next image, let's go down and select one. And I might select my lead magnet here and go insert. Now let's go ahead and change the width of these columns so that the sidebar is a little bit more narrow. Now, if you aren't used to using Flexbox and CSS grid, then this is probably how you have it set up in your website. To change the width of these two columns, you might currently have gone to the primary and then gone to the style tab and then to layout. And then here under the width, you might have set this to something like 70% and then here for the sidebar under the style tab as well you might have set this to something like 30% so now they look like that and then maybe to add some spacing between the two columns on the sidebar under style and layout for the margin you might have added something like uh, two rem just to add this gutter in between them and then as you moved through the breakpoints and then you got to something like the mobile landscape 
you might have gone to the primary and set its width here to be a hundred percent. So it takes up the full width and then the sidebar here, the exact same taking up a hundred percent. Now, if we preview that on the front end, this is what we currently have. And as we go through down here, you know, that looks pretty good, goes down and then it goes to a hundred percent of the width. But I want to show you why this isn't the ideal way to go out and handle your sidebar. Don't worry. You just need to make a couple of small changes. They're very fast, but I want to explain why that current setup doesn't work for showing and hiding sidebars based on conditions. So coming back into Bricks Builder here, let's say we want to apply this to all of our blog posts, but we don't want this sidebar to output on one particular blog post. So the way that we will do that is we first need to apply this template to all of our blog posts. So to do that, we'll just go up to settings and then template settings, conditions, add a condition. And here we're going to apply this to all the post types of our posts. So all of our blog posts. So so if I save this and we go back to this blog post that we looked at earlier, if I reload this, you can see now that template is being applied to our blog post. And if we go back to our list of blog posts, so my blog page, and then we come down and click into any of these. So uh, make a row sticky on scroll. You can see it's applying to this blog post as well. So now that we have this template applying to all of our blog posts, let's click on our sidebar here. And then we're going up here and we'll add a condition. And then here we will exclude it from just that one particular blog post that we don't want to show it on. So I'll go add a condition. And then here we will select the post ID and coming back to the blog post that we don't want to output this sidebar on if we go and get the post ID so we can just click to edit the blog post and then up here in the URL we have the ID of that post so I'll just copy that so coming back in here where the post ID and we want to do is not equal to that specific post ID and then we'll click save and now if we come back here and reload the page you can see the sidebar is an outputting but on this other blog post that we have open if we reload the page here it's still being output there so our conditions are working but you can see the problem with our current setup if I right click and inspect element here and we have a look at this primary content so here you can see if I move myself up we set this width to be 70% and that's why even though we hide the sidebar and don't output it on the page and if I go to the parent there's still available space over here because we defined this to be 70% width when we hide the sidebar it doesn't automatically stretch to fill up that available space and so that's why I'm making this video today because there is a way to go out and achieve this so that when you hide the sidebar this will automatically stretch the full width of the page and the way that we do that is using Flexbox so if you don't know about Flexbox this is going to be a good introduction to it because we are going to be using some of the features like Flex Grow uh, probably look at Flex Shrink we could have a look at that maybe not in this particular case but we will also look at Flex Basis so let's jump in and get that going so back here in our template let's go ahead and remove all those widths that we set previously so I'm going to click on the primary and I'm going to exit out of the condition builder and I'm going to go to the layout tab and you can see where we have the width to be 70% I'm going to remove that I'm going to go through all the breakpoints where we set that and remove the widths that we set and I think that was all of them for the primary and then let's go to the sidebar and I'm going to do the same so starting with the main breakpoint here I'm going to remove the width there and we'll just go through and through I'm going to remove that from there and then just coming back to this one here we also have this margin adding the gutter there I'm going to show you an even better way to go out and add that so let's actually just remove that from there as well. So now they're sitting exactly the same width right next to each other. So let's go and just collapse these so it's a bit easier to follow along. I'm going to click onto the parents, the container, and then go to the content tab. Now the reason they're sitting next to each other is because we have this flex direction set to row. So if I get rid of that, this is what it does default out of the box. And then we want to come up here again with the parent selected. We want to go over to flex direction and we want to set it to horizontal. And what that does is it gets the children inside there and sits them along this horizontal axis there. So across the row and sets their widths to be equal. So this would be 50% here and that would be 50% there. So now how do we go and resize these two columns to get the look that we're going for? So it's quite interesting, but we only need to set the width for the sidebar here. So if we go down to the sidebar and then we go down to this setting here, flex basis. If I set this to something like 350 pixels, you can see it's resized this. And then the primary content area has stretched the full width of the page. But if we save this and go back to this blog post here where we're outputting it and then reload the page, and then I right click and go inspect and we have a look at what's going on here. So I'll go and find the sidebar, which is here. You can see this sidebar is actually a width. If we go to the computer tab, 
and I just pull that up a bit. If we go down a little bit, you can see we set the flex basis to be a width of 350 pixels, but its actual width that's been rendered on the screen is 270 pixels. So what's going on there? What I would suggest is definitely taking some time to go to Google and searching flex basis and trying to understand what flex basis, flex shrink and flex grow do. I will have a video coming up on my YouTube channel going through them, but the way that flex basis works is you're telling it that when it's going out and trying to sit these two columns next to each other, you want it to be 350 pixels wide, but you sort of give it a little bit of leeway, the browser, to do its own thing based on the content in there and what it thinks is going to be best for your content. If we want to go and take the power away from the browser and we want this to actually be 350 pixels wide and not let the browser do its own thing on top of that, we want to come here where it says flex shrink and it's set to one, which means that we're going to let the browser shrink it if, if it needs to or it feels like it should. And we're going to set this to zero which turns that off. So now we're saying when it goes to render this flex box here for the container, and it's trying to sit the children next to each other, we want you to calculate it based on our sidebar being 350 pixels wide, and you don't have the ability to make it smaller. And by default, flex grow is off, so the browser doesn't have the ability to make it any larger. And thus what we've done here is we've made this a fixed width of 350 pixels. And what's really cool about what we just set up is if I go back to the primary, we don't need to go and set any settings here because again, Flexbox will go and say, okay, I have these two items here that need to sit within this container. I know that this needs to be 350 pixels wide and then it just gets the remaining space and that's the width of the primary content area. And that's why, and you'll see it in a second when I show you on the front end, that's why we can now delete this sidebar based on conditions and the browser will just stretch this the full width of the page because it wants to take up the full width of the page. And again, just to recap, we haven't set set any widths for our primary and our sidebar under the style and width tab. There's no settings there currently. This is all achieved just by going to our sidebar and setting these settings you see on the screen. Now, before we go out and just preview this on the front end, let's go up here on our container. And because we've set our container to be a flex direction of row, it sits the children elements inside there across the row here. So that's the main axis. The children inside there, the two items here, they're actually columns now. And what that means is with the parent selected, we can come down here and add column gap. And we could add something like 2.5 rems. And now we've added the gap here or the gutter, the space between the two columns. So let's go ahead and save that. And then back here on the front end, let's reload. And now all our blog posts across our website will have our sidebar, have this layout. But if we delete the sidebar, so if I right click and go inspect element, and I found that sidebar, so I go up, here's a sidebar. If I go and just delete this sidebar, look what happens to the primary. So if I go right click, and then I go to delete element, and I do this, now it stretches the full width of the page, like so. And that's why if I come back to this blog post here, where we had that fixed width at 70% earlier in today's video, now when I go and reload the page here, it stretches that full width. So again, for this sidebar, we added some conditions here where if the post ID is not equal to this blog post, then the sidebar renders. But for the blog post with this ID, which is this one here, we don't output the sidebar and then the primary content area stretches the full width because it wants to stretch the full width of the page. So that's how you go and toggle on and off a sidebar inside a Bricks Builder, but only have to manage the one template. And another benefit about what I've shown you today is here on the front end, because we set this to be a fixed width of 350 pixels here in that flex basis setting, as the browser is resized, you'll notice that the actual sidebar doesn't change the width. The browser understands that this is going to be 350 pixels wide, and this just needs to fill the remaining space. And that's why when we resize it, we get that final result. And as it gets too small, it goes like that. Now, before we end today's video, let's just finish off and complete this template here. I can see a couple of errors here. Uh, this seems to have an overflow. So we have a scroll down here. It looks like these images are sticking out of the page. So coming back into the builder, what we could do to uh, handle this, we have a couple of different options. So on the sidebar, we could change the flex basis. So uh, we could scale it down a little bit. So we could do something like 200 pixels here. 
and flex shrink is set to zero, which means it can't get any smaller than that. So if we save this and then preview that on the front end, so I'll just reload the page here. If we bring this in to that breakpoint, which is here, as we pull it in, it shouldn't get any smaller than that. So if I right click and go inspect and I have a look at the width of the sidebar, so I'll just hover on it and you can see up there, it's 200 pixels wide. So the flex basis is working and it doesn't resize there. The primary content works around it. And then as it gets to maybe a smallest breakpoint like this, uh, if we go down and see what's happening there, the browser has done this, which is pretty good, uh, but we could go back and then down to this breakpoint where they collapse under each other. If we go to the sidebar and have a look there. So here at this breakpoint for flex basis, we might set this back to auto. And then as it goes down, it just takes up the full width. Now, the last thing that I wanna show you here is if we have a look, if I just collapse that and collapse that, the primary content is here and then the sidebar is there. We might wanna add some space there so that when it does collapse, the sidebar is separated from this primary content area. And we can do that very easily. So what we could do is we go back to the desktop and then we go back to the container, the parent. And then here we added column gap because remember this container here is set to flex direction row. So the main axis goes across the row. Then the children inside there become columns. And that's why we set a column gap here. But as it gets down to the smaller breakpoints, those children here then sit on top of each other and become rows. And so that's why we can set row gap. So if I go back here to desktop, where we have the column gap set to 2.5 rem, we could set the row gap, and I'll just make it very obvious here to something like 10 rem. And you'll notice that nothing happens because inside this container, there aren't any rows because they're columns, they're sitting next to each other. But as we go down and then they collapse on top of each other and become rows, if I go to where the sidebar is now and scroll up, you can see now there's 10 RAM spacing them there. Now, final words for this tutorial, if we go back up and we have a look at the conditions here, so for the sidebar um, under the conditions here, you'll see that this sidebar isn't rendering for this specific post ID, which makes sense today, but in a couple of days or weeks when I come back to this, I'm looking at this, I'm like, what post is this post ID? It's obviously not the easiest way to manage. So this was a very simple demonstration today with this condition here to exclude one particular post ID. If you actually had to do that, it might be quite hard to manage. So if you wanted to know a better way to do that to exclude based on specific posts, uh, you know, let me know, I can make a video on it. More than likely, you're probably wanting to have this layout here, but you probably want to exclude this sidebar based on post type. If you do want to know how to go out and use a conditional logic feature, inside a Bricks Builder to show and hide elements based on post type, then I definitely recommend going and watching this video here. I thought conditional logic inside Bricks Builder had this feature because in this video, I show you how to exclude things using the conditional logic feature in Bricks Builder based on post type because I actually thought that it was a very easy thing to do, but it's actually a little bit more tricky than you might think. So if that sounds interesting to you, I'm gonna put it on your screen now as well, as well as another video that YouTube thinks you're going to like. So pick one of those two videos and I'll see you in one of those videos. Thank <laughs> you.